Hi everyone, welcome to another Table Talk. As the title says, uh, today's discussion is going to be on uh, speed controller timing uh, in your park jet and uh, whether or not it's worth uh, experimenting with. And I guess, uh, you know, does it make a difference? And I suppose the answer is both yes and no. Uh, much of it depends on the motor that you're using and the speed controller that you're using and I guess also what you're looking for uh, out of your power setup. Uh, I'm always looking for that, you know, even that just slight little edge in, uh, in throttle response, in power, uh, speed, uh, that sort of stuff. So th those are some of the reasons why I have done some experimentation. Uh, so a while back, uh, a, a loyal viewer on my YouTube channel had posed a question uh, because I was talking in a video about uh, speed, uh, ESC timing issues. Um, so I, I, uh, I gave him a fairly short answer, but it, you know, I've, in the back of my head, I've been thinking about doing this uh, video. So that's that's why we're at uh, we are where we're at. Uh, so I've got three different speed controllers here: uh, 22 plus 40 amp. Um, I've been use I use this for years, uh, and I know a lot of people still use it. It's a very very uh, durable and reliable uh, speed controller. Uh, I've also got the Turnig AE45. Uh, really, really good speed controller. Unfortunately, uh, I, I, it's been either showing out of stock or discontinued at Hobby King now for several months, so I don't know if you'd be able to get it again. Uh, it's a real shame because it's an inexpensive uh, and um, very versatile speed controller because there's a lot of different settings in timing and both pulse width modulation frequency that you can experiment with. Uh, this is probably my absolute favorite. It is expensive. It's the Hobby Wing Platinum Pro 40 amp. Uh, it's about $40 US, but uh, the beauty of this speed controller is that I can run any of my power setups, uh, my quad racing uh, motor power setups on 3S or 4S, and uh, it'll handle it all uh, with no problem at all. So I just, you know, I don't have to worry about uh, changing speed controllers or uh, burning it out. I mean, touch, touch wood, I've pushed this, uh, pushed this beauty hard and it's never, never let me down yet. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so a couple of different tools that I use. Uh, I, actually, I should, I should uh, back up here. I'm not going to try and explain to you uh, how timing works or how pulse width modulation works. Uh, I, it's, you know, it's over my head and uh, I, don't, I can't exactly explain the science uh, behind it. Uh, what I'm, what I'm going to share here with you today is based on uh, my experience from doing a considerable amount of uh, bench testing on my uh, trusty little bench uh, thrust stand here as well as uh, just going to the field uh, you know where the, the rubber hits the road so to speak and uh, just seeing how things uh, work out so that's uh, essentially uh, you know uh, I guess practical experience sometimes is, uh, is worth its weight in gold so uh, a couple of basic tools that, uh, that I've used uh, this is a, a lander um, uh, speaker or a thrust stand that I picked up at Banggood. Uh, I think I just checked today. It's about seventy-five dollars uh, U.S., but I got mine on sale. Uh, so very, very, uh, you know, inexpensive. This has been a, just a real valuable tool for me. Uh, one of the other very valuable tools, and I encourage anybody that's running electric, uh, whether it's a park jet or anything else, is spend a few bucks and pick yourself up a good watt meter because uh, you know once you attach the connections on the end, which you have to provide. You can plug it between your battery and your speed controller, and it'll tell you exactly what your prop, your motor, your speed controller, and your battery uh, are doing with respect to amps, watts, uh, things like that. Uh, amps, especially because amps are what can kill motors, speed controllers, and batteries if the amp draw is uh, too high for any of those components. So, uh, I'll have a link to a fairly inexpensive one in Banggood at Banggood, but uh, yeah, definitely worth the few bucks because it could save you long term from uh, you know, cooking a motor, a speed controller, or a battery, or all three. So those are some good tools uh, that I've used. All right, so if you're using um, the, uh, you know, a 2212, uh, 2200, you know, the Park Jet Workhorse, the, uh, you know, one of the, probably the most popular motor ever in uh, Park Jets, and the, the sort of the standard that all other motors are compared to, or also the 2212 5T 2700. Uh, what I would suggest is do not uh, mess around with the timing uh, on any of these speed controllers, uh, and especially you know a lot of I know a lot of people like I said use the plush. Leave the timing on low, which is factory default. And why I say that is 
the motor will run and you will get uh, slight you may get slightly better uh, thrust numbers uh, and also maybe slightly better throttle response but these for some reason these motors these inexpensive but very uh, you know good motors they are they're not happy on anything other than low timing or or factory default timing on these two and what I mean by that is I've gone out to the field where I have experimented you know I've been I've been pleased with the numbers on the bench I get out to the field I start flying and I get uh, like a desync where the, the motor will be, be running just fine and then all of a sudden it'll, you know, it'll ding, ding, it'll start to skip. Uh, I've also had situations where it will uh, chop to almost half power, like even like a minute into the flight when the battery is, is uh, fresh, it, it almost starts to behave like you're on a low volt, hit low voltage cutoff. Uh, and I found that uh, the only, by, by trial and error, uh, the only way to reset it was to chop the power to zero uh, and then advance it again, which I guess kind of reboots the speed controller. But, uh, you know, that's not something you want to be doing. I mean, you don't want to be flying around at 50% throttle, uh, you know, losing half the power available to you. Or, you know, you might be in a situation where you're close to the ground or a tree or something like that. Uh, you don't want to be able to, you know, you want to be in a situation where you need to chop the power for a second and then advance it again. So just leave them on any of these speed controllers on low if you're using the 2212, 2200 or the 2212, 2700. Okay, uh, so moving on to um, quad racing motors and then uh, these two speed controllers. These two, these two speed controllers have uh, eight different timing settings and uh, the ability to change between two different pulse width modulation frequencies. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about uh, that a little bit. Uh, on my uh, motor test spreadsheet, which I'll have linked below, I did uh, a testing with this 24, Racer Star 2406-2600 motor. So what I did, you know, eight timing settings, two different pulse width modulation frequencies. Essentially, there's 16 com different combinations available to you on these two speed controllers. So what I did was I just went through every single one, you know, went through eight different timing settings on one of the pulse width modulation frequencies switched the, the uh, PWM and then went through the other, through the timing settings over again to find what worked best for, for me. So for these quad racing motors, uh, what I found, this one I think it's uh, 22 and a half degrees, which is not the highest timing setting, but darn close. And also the 24 kilohertz pulse width modulation frequency, which is not factory default. Factory default on both of these is 12 kilohertz pulse, pulse width modulation frequency. Uh, so that those are custom settings on this speed controller. On this speed controller, I found the highest timing setting, uh, 26.25 degrees timing, and 8 kilohertz uh, pulse width modulation frequency uh, work the best. So these those are the custom timing settings I run on both of these with any of these uh, quad racing motors. Um, also, with the Turnigy Plush, uh, I have been experimenting, if you go back a little bit in my, uh, on my YouTube channel, I have been experimenting with several of these quad racing motors using uh, high timing. Uh, the difference between thrust and amp draw, uh, pretty, pretty minimal, uh, you know, nothing to write home about. Excuse me. What I did notice, however, though, was with these motors, that desyncing, skipping, uh, loss of power, not a problem with these, with these uh, quad racing motors. It, it, they just ran uh, nice and smooth when I went to high timing. I did notice at the field uh, also a little bit better throttle response. So not, you know, not anything that would scare you to death when you hammer the throttle, but definitely a little bit quicker throttle response uh, up and down. So if you have a Turnigy Plush, uh, and you have, uh, this is the Racer Star 2406-2600, uh, probably the best, I consider the best bargain uh, value uh, quad racing motor for uh, park jets. Uh, the uh, Emax 2306-2750, which until I found the GEP RC uh, was my favorite. Uh, and the, also the B Rotor 2207-2780. Uh, I've run all three of these motors on 3S and 4S with this Turnigy Plush uh, 40 amp speed controller. Uh, the motors run pretty warm and the speed controller runs pretty warm, but uh, you know, so far so good. Uh, no, no problems whatsoever. So if you have 
some of these motors and you want to uh, and you don't want to go and spend uh, you know a whole bunch of money on Platinum Pro give high timing uh, uh, a try and uh, see how it works out for you uh, I just uh, today in fact tested the GEP RC 2306 2750 which is the uh, my favorite most powerful motor I have um, on high timing again no problems whatsoever uh, with the gem fan flash 6042 by 2 uh, prop uh, pulling about 48 amps, so the speed controller came down pretty hot. So I don't think I would ever run this particular motor on 4S unless maybe I was uh, using uh, like a 5-inch five 5-inch uh, uh, three-blade quad prop, but then you're only gaining about 200 grams of uh, thrust. But this bad boy, if you really, really want the speed, uh, go to the, you know, you spend the extra money, get the Platinum Pro, Put a 6x3 EMP on here and uh, just go and light your hair on fire. It's about a 400 uh, gram jump in uh, thrust over running it on uh, 3S with uh, the 6042x2 prop. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so like I said, I just uh, went through, uh, experimented and went through the settings. Uh, you know, if you don't, and I, you know, I essentially had to go 16 tests with both speed controllers. Uh, you know, it was a tedious process, but, uh, but now well worth it. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have a speed controller, uh, or a speed controller, a thrust stand, uh, then, you know, you can look at my spreadsheet, uh, and if you trust my numbers, I would experiment with those, uh, with those settings, or you can go and read through that whole thing. Uh, I think on that spreadsheet, if you uh, scroll to the right, you'll see uh, ESC testing with uh, Racer Star BR2406-2600. And you can see all the different uh, results from all of those different combinations of settings. So yeah, so there, uh, there we go. So yeah, timing um, does it matter? Uh, yes or no? Um, you know. So like I said, if you're if you're if you're running, uh, you know, the most popular sizes, uh, 2212, 2200, or 2700 kV, don't just leave your uh, leave your speed controllers the way they came in the box don't mess around with the timing or pulse width modulation frequency uh, the, those motors are happiest with factory default settings on all three of these uh, if you're running a quad motor um, you know like many of the quad motors that I've tested uh, you can experiment going to high on the uh, plush you should not have any issues with it uh, desyncing or anything like that and also you will get slightly better uh, throttle response so uh, nothing major, but uh, you know something to experiment with. Uh, and then if you're uh, using either one of these speed controllers, then definitely um, you know you want to change away from factory default if you really want to squeeze the best amount of power out of uh, a quad racing motor. Uh, and I've tested many of them, as you can see on the uh, spreadsheet. Uh, so I hope that that's been helpful to you. Uh, again, uh, I apologize for not being able to give you all the science behind how all of that stuff works. But again, I think, you know, just practical experience testing, going through the process of testing on my thrust stand and then taking it to the field and seeing what the motor speed controller uh, combo does, um, you know, is probably, you know, the best way to do it anyway, because that's what really matters, <laughs> uh, you know, when you get to the field. So, yeah. So there we go, folks. Uh, um, thanks. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you have any questions or comments. Please leave them down below. Uh, I'll have multiple links in the video description down below. Uh, thanks as always for watching. Blue skies, calm winds to everyone. Park jet noise. You have the sound of freedom, baby. Take care.